the Ambenic RG353PS has been praised by reviewers since its release. As Android is nowhere to be seen, many emulators are not available, but can this unit still stand head to head with its larger brother? Is the 353PS too late for the party? Let's find out. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribble. I usually need an air pump. Before we jump into the review, we need to say this unit was kindly donated to us by links.com. No cash was sent for the review, and we've done our best to keep it free of bias. We've added affiliate links to the video description, and any purchase will help the channel at no extra cost for yourself. Anyway, let's get into it. This arrived. It came wrapped in a thin layer of bubble wrap, but thankfully the box wasn't damaged. We got here the Ambenic RG353PS. Originally, I thought the PS stood for PlayStation, but that's not the case at all. There's not much written on the box, other than made in China, transparent white, and it comes with a 128GB microSD. Get ready. Surprise! It's upside down. Just like my last rendezvous with Counselor Troy. So we have the handheld, screen wipes, those will be for the screen protector. That's in here if you need it. And an instruction manual. It's in English and Chinese and full of hotkeys if you need them. In this cardboard box we have a short USB-C cable, which we can use for charging the handheld or to connect to a PC to transfer over games. Even though the box wasn't protected well, the contents were. The combination of the plastic eggshell interior and this protective piece guards the RG353PS in all the right places. And this handheld in transparent white is quite beautiful indeed. On the front we have the 3.5 inch display, D-pad and classic Super Nintendo colours. We have function, select, and start, power button and two analog sticks. You pay extra for that in my massage parlor. On the bottom, we have two stereo speakers, here and here, as well as two micro SD slots. One's for the Linux system, one's for additional games. In the center, a headphone jack. Perfect. Micro SD cards included are a 16GB Kyoxia and a 128 Don't Give a Damn Ambernick standard issue. Well, on the top, we have four digital shoulder buttons and a variety of ports. USB-C, OTG, a small reset button that's out of the way, mini HDMI, a volume rocker in the correct orientation, and a USB-C for charging. charging. Nothing much on the back except for these rubber pads that feel quite nice. Let's check the buttons. The D-pad's like from a SNES pad, but pivots better. And the buttons are a little small, but bounce back well. Shoulder buttons are good. We find that L and R1 are a little thin. Analog sticks are similar to a Nintendo Switch, with a button if you push down. They could be better placed, but with this handheld, we're not really expected to play any system that can benefit from them. Outside that, this handheld feels great in my hands. Can't compete with a nice set of melons. It's about time for the size comparison. It's slightly larger in length than the 353VS, and even larger than the Mio Mini Plus. The screen of the Retro Bucket 3 is much larger, but it's only one centimeter longer in length. And then we have the RG353P. Outside the color, these two are identical. Let's teabag it. The RG353BS is three Roybush teabags big. Very similar to the RG353BS, this handheld should run systems up to around Dreamcast and PSP. Perfect for retro gaming. Boot time. Time for some funnies. Why can't a leopard hide? Because he's always spotted. Why didn't Han Solo enjoy his steak dinner? It was chewy. What would bears be without the letter B? Yeah. What do you get if you cross an angry sheep with a moody car? Counselor Troyer. I'm John Luke. I like fish and chips. 24 seconds, not fast at all, but at least we have a sleep function. This is Ambinic OS, a light version of Linux running emulation station. This menu is very simple, just select the system you want to play, and it'll give you a list of games. Select one of them, and you get straight into the action. Pushing the function key in game brings the RetroArc menu, where you can save game, change controls, dip switches, and emulator settings. Then if you want to exit the game and go back to the menu, hold the power button. If you tap the power button again, it goes into sleep mode. Then to turn off, we need to shut down from the menu. Before getting into the gameplay, we're going to add some of our own games. So I'll remove this microSD, and then pop it into our computer. On the microSD we have folders with the system names. There's actually a PS2 folder here with around 1.2GB of data. You can safely remove that, as this handheld absolutely cannot play PS2. There's an info text file in each folder telling you which ROMs it's looking for, and we can just copy them in. 
Now if we check through this games list, we should see... Ah, there it is. Amiga. With our added games. Let's check some gameplay. Arcade. Most of the 80s and 90s games were fine. They won't be able to handle 3D games like Tekken or later cave titles. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike is a pretty good test for the D-pad. No issues with the Dukens at all. We even have a section for vertical arcade shooters, and it works incredibly well with the button layout. On to computers now, here's some 8-bits. An Atari ST runs great, just make sure you increase the screen size and the scaling options. Amiga. This is the WHD load version of Turrican 2. Most of the Amiga library runs really well. The gym power needs a bit more juice. In order to get this game a bit more playable, we can use RetroArch options to add frame skip. MS DOS. Running ScumVM at default settings gives no sound and stalls. We can fix this by changing the emulator core to the ScumVM standalone. Aha! A secret passage! This is all too easy. Let's move on to some handhelds. Here's the Game Boy. Game Boy Advance. Nintendo DS works pretty well. Just note it's not touch screen, but you can control the pen and flick through screen modes with the shoulder buttons. Onto some consoles with the NES. And Super Nintendo. Similar to the other handhelds by Anbernic, the Rockman game included plays poorly. Switch this with the US version and it'll run great. N64. But this system is quite difficult to emulate. If you're looking for flawless N64, you need to look elsewhere. The same applies for 3DO. To speed this up, we can check in the options and turn off high res. A little better, but not 100%. Let's move on to the Mega Drive. It runs really well. We can even use Sega CD with CHD files. Thirty-two X. And Sega Dreamcast. But not all games run at full speed. Check Dead or Life too. Luckily, some Sega Thomas Wave runs great. Here's PlayStation. As we mentioned earlier, PlayStation 2 is not possible, but PlayStation Portable can be surprisingly playable. And the more demanding titles can chug a little.
Outrun 2006 was running great until we got to the bridge. If a mini HDMI cable is connected to a TV on boot up, we can use the handheld as a console. A second player can connect with a Bluetooth controller, and we can have a fully portable retro gaming machine. When comparing for screen brightness, the 353PS is similar to other Anbinic handhelds. The Retro Pocket 3 Plus is brighter, and the Mi Mini Plus here comes in last place. If you wanted a handheld for bed, the darkest was the Retroid, and the Mi Mini Plus, and then the Anbinics. Both of these screens are very similar. The 353P is slightly more saturated, but the difference is negligible. The only real reason to choose the 353P over this is if you need to use Android, but at that price point, there are other handhelds to consider. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The RG 353PS is a nice retro gaming handheld and feels great in the hands. Soon as it gets to your door, it's ready to play and it's highly customizable. Unfortunately, the second micro SD is not reliable and some settings still need tweaking. Similar to the other 353 systems, this one certainly can hold its own. If you want to get something more capable, the RG505 or the Retro Pocket 3 Plus is what you need. Here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Here at Team Pandori, we make video reviews, tutorials, and help fix them cheap arcade machines and the A-Founder Mini. If you appreciate our work, please consider jumping on, or you can smash the like and subscribe. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! And if you are a pretty girl, come down for a massage, or you could check another one of our excellent videos. I am John Moore.